evening, um, everyone. Tonight we are talking about guarding your heart. And um, I want to start off by reading Proverbs 4, verse 23. And it says, Watch God over your heart with all diligence, for from it flows the springs of life. Um, and while I read this, um, the Lord reminded me of something, somewhere where he spoke about guarding. And when he spoke about guarding, he said in Matthew 26, verse 41, keep actively watching and praying. Um, watch and pray. And for me, this is something that we use a lot. A lot of times we say we should watch and pray, we should watch and pray. But do we really know what he was talking about here? Um, at the moment when this happened, Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, and it was right before the crucifixion. And what he said is, he said to his disciples, he said, keep actively watching and praying that you may not come into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. And a lot of times when we use the scripture, we talk about watching and praying against physical things. We should um, guard against um, attacks. We should, we should um, guard against our attacks against our homes, um, our kids being um, abducted and all of these things. And I'm not saying that this is not the wrong, uh, the right things to do, but we forget that Jesus was speaking about something else here. And I just quickly want to read in Luke 12, verse 4 as well. It says, I say to you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body. And after that, have nothing more that they can do. But I will point out to you, you should fear. Fear the one who, after he has killed, has authority and power to hold you into hell. Yes, I say to you, fear him. And I just quickly want to touch on watch, um, guarding. If you look at the word to guard, it means to watch, to give strict attention to, to be active and to be cautious about it. So Jesus said that we should guard against temptations. And temptations are things that wants to lure us away from him. Temptations are things that... Um, that is trying to divert us away from the Lord. And it says that it's a, a, a trial of man's fidelity, your integrity, your virtue, and your constancy. A temptation by which the devil seeks to divert you from a divine errand. And that's exactly what happened to Jesus that night at Gethsemane. Um, the, the temptation for him was that he had to guard over his heart. The temptation, he didn't have to watch over the armies coming to take him captive because he said himself, my father can send a legion of angels to take me out of this situation. He had to guard his heart. He had to guard against temptations, temptations that will take him away from this divine errand that he was about to do. The temptation to... Um, not go through with what he was about to go through, to um, not do his father's will. Because at the end of the day, um, the, the devil uses all of these things to attack our hearts. Because if he attacks our bodies, he can only kill us. <laughs> but we still um, go to heaven. But if he can attack our hearts, then he has us. Then he can move us away from the will of God. Then he can move us away from what God has in store for us. And that's the thing that for me that stood out, that we really need to guard our hearts. And when we talk about our hearts, we're not just talking about this heart. We are talking about our mind, our will, and our emotions. And that's the biggest thing that determines how we react in situations, our mind, our will, and our emotions when we are attacked physically. So with that background, I would like you all to 
to let's let's share a bit about this. Let's talk about it. Okay, so I think I'm going to jump in quickly because I also have the the verse that you were you just read, which said um, Proverbs four verse twenty three, which says that watch over your heart with all diligence, mm -hmm. for from it flows the springs of life. What I realize is that our heart is the essence of our life. And the Bible also says in Proverbs 23, 7, and that um, 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 as a man thinks, so is he. So basically, the, the Bible is telling us that we should guard against the things that will make us pull away from God. Remember, any the, the, there's a saying, I don't know who, who said it. It says that everything that we constantly think about um, it says that what what you you your life is going the direction of what you are constantly thinking about. So when the Bible is telling us now that say guard your heart, guard your heart, and sometimes this guard your heart is like um, only used when you are going into a relationship, like you you got heartbroken. Now they say guard your heart that the, the, the wrong person doesn't come in, but it goes beyond that. As you just said, it goes far beyond that. Guarding your heart against the seeds. I mean, we 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 wake up every day and we listen to stuff. We see people. We read stuff. We watch stuff. Always planting seeds in our hearts, and if those seeds germinate and it's not in a right way we bring a harvest of so many things what we listen to does it give us fear does it give us jealousy we watch um, um on, on social media what what does it what seed does it sow in our hearts that we compare ourselves to everybody else the bible says guard your heart because out of it is how we are going to be living so if we are opening our hearts to so many things that is just sowing seeds here and there how are we going to be living this Christian life? So I think it is a, a very good um, topic that we are dealing with, especially in this moment where there are so many things that is a distraction. So when we are guarding our hearts, it's against the distractions of this world, against the things that take us away from who God really is um, to us as Christians. Um, if if you have no guard, or if there is a weakness, for example, let's say a city that's um, surrounded by a wall that needs protection. If there is a hole in the wall um, in their defense, it means that they, are, they have a weak point and that they are vulnerable against attacks. So, so the guarding is needed for protection against whatever wants to come against or whatever should not go out. So um, I just want to give an example of something that I saw. I'm visiting my mom and my nephew is here. And there's a very shy cat here. And she's very determined to stay away from my nephew um, as far as possible and as long as possible. But my nephew has accepted the challenge to win this cat's heart. But um, he, he has a false motive. Um, so at first, he's now behaving like, like out of character, you know, not, not pushing the cat, not being too pushy, slowly waiting for her to come closer. And then at night, he wants her to sleep on the bed with him. So he's lying very still as if he is asleep because he wants to draw her closer. But his entire intention is when he gets the cat, he wants to squeeze the living daylights out of the cat. <laughs> That's what he wants to do with it. So, um, so if we see it like that, often um, it's like there are things that are luring us slowly but surely, and we're not seeing the danger in it. We're not seeing the motives of, let's say, the enemy or people or situations, um, and then because we have a vulnerability or a weakness in our guard um, ar around our heart, it, it makes us vulnerable and susceptible to the attack and um, for it to cause harm in our lives. I can so relate to, to what you're saying, Monique, because um, I had a whole bunch of stuff written down, but I'm, I'm just going to read. Solomon actually gave this advice to his son when he was speaking about guarding the heart. Um, and the, the, the writer highlights the core of a person. Um, and as Nita said, it's their thoughts, their feelings, their desires, and their choices, and where it begins. Um, and as somebody who also previously struggled with 
addiction and depression. Um, this was so important for me to do um, and almost kind of identify the things that would trigger me. And there was a scripture, um, I can't remember where it stands, but it says to be alert um, and to be aware of what is going on um, because the devil does so subtly uh, come and it's just a little thing. Um, and then you think, oh, so we have this thing in our house where we say, bring it to the light. Um, and basically, so me and Matt will just, you know, touch base and say, you know, something's bothering me, even if it's like a silly thing. Because if you keep quiet about it, what, what we've noticed is the devil will just start to kind of um, brew these thoughts in your mind. And then as the day goes on and something else happens and you have a challenge in your day or the kids are difficult or you're not feeling well, he is so smart. Um and if you weren't aware and you're not alert and you haven't brought it to the light, in our case, for example, then it starts to fester. And um, it becomes such a great tool for him to uh, reap destruction because you see his plan is to kill, steal and destroy, but he does it through division. And it starts one thought at a time, one offense at a time. And so for me, I have to be so aware and um, in Luke 6, 45, it says, out of the uh, heart, uh, the abundance of the heart speaks the mouth. And I will sometimes have to listen to myself speaking and, and, and watch what I say. Um, and it's so nice when you, you have somebody that can kind of keep you accountable with this in God in your heart. Um, I think with soldiers as well, you know, when they guard a fort, they make turns and they relieve each other. And you can't do it on your own. So the one mistake that when somebody used to say to me, God, your heart is shut people out, build a brick wall. And, and that's not what it is. That's not what you're supposed to be doing because God made us for relationship and connection. And you should actually be um, relying on each other and, and saying to each other, hey, check me. <laughs> we always say, yeah, check me, you know, and, and watch. Um, if you know somebody and you know that that is a trigger for them or that's something that, you know, could possibly lead to a, a dangerous situation, you know, help each other out. So that's that's how we do it in our household. And um, it helps us to understand then that our thoughts dictate who we become because the mind of a man or a woman reflects who they genuinely are. And this is precisely why the Lord says, examine the heart's of a man or a woman because he knows the depths of them and he sees into the, the inner parts that we don't sometimes want to speak about. So sometimes it's not nice to do it, but I will just like sit next to Matthew and I will say, oh, today I feel really depressed and I just, and I'll just blurt it out, even though it doesn't feel nice to say it and you feel vulnerable, but then it's in the light and the devil can't use it. Yes, I would like to add there, um, um, it's interesting that we spoke about the the um, the walls and the gates, because um, especially in the Old Testament, it speaks a lot about gates and gateways. And the gates were places where transactions took place. It was very important places. And in today's life, I don't think we always understand it. But if we think more like a border post, at a border post, um, there's very strict regulations. Only certain people are let into a, a country and um, only certain things are allowed, especially if you watch this Border Patrol. <laughs> you will see this. <laughs> there's a lot of things that's not allowed to, to go through border posts. And if we think of our hearts, it's the same. We have these gateways to our hearts, to our souls, which is our our eyes, our ears, and our mouth, like Doreen said, the things we listen to, the things we look at, and the things we speak. And we need to, um, to guard it really like a border post is guarded. We need to decide what is allowed and what is not allowed because that will bring the fruit forth. That will determine what is going on in your heart. And then when temptations come, what will your reaction be? Because um, we, 
we tend to the soil of our heart and we need to make sure that we, and it's like you say, Leray, it's not about shutting everyone and ed everything out now. It's about letting the right things in so that the right things can root in our heart, so that the correct trees can grow, so that the correct fruit can be there. Because when we get into situations, we need to react. And reactions are most of the time from the heart <laughs> for all of us. I think especially for women, um, when we react, we react from the heart. But when our hearts are um, right and pure and steadfast before the Lord, if we have the truth, if we have a solid foundation, it's just so much easier to react in the correct way. Because I think one of the greatest temptations comes in our reactions. And it's a, uh, we have this Afrikaans saying, where your heart van vol is, loop die mond van oor. And it is just like that. What your heart is full of comes out of your mouth. If you squeeze a lemon, you get lemon juice. If you squeeze an orange, you get orange juice. You cannot get something else. And the thing is, when we get squeezed, what happens to us? What comes out of our mouth? Because that is what our hearts are full of. And that is why we, we really, really need to guard our heart. We need, really need to be strict about our hearts. Why are we strict about other things so easily? But when it comes to our hearts, we sometimes let things in, which we shouldn't let in. Yeah. I think something that's also a practical um tool for guarding our hearts is um is to use the word as the foundation and it sounds such a super spiritual thing to say um but it really is not if if we know the truth if we know what the word says the word the word of truth and we write that on the tables of our hearts uh, we no longer live by the the the, the stones with the law, the law is not written on those stones anymore. It's written on the tables of our hearts. And if we allow the word, the truth of the word to renew our minds and to change the way we react, to change our decisions, it allows us to, um, to guard our hearts and not to allow emotions or situations or people um, to affect us um, in a way that is detrimental or that's um, causing us to react in ways we regret, you know. Um, so, so it says, it says in John, John 8, uh, 31, 32, um, if you abide in my word, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So if we don't know the truth, if we don't know what the word says, the word is the sword. When we have the, um, the, the Valpen resting, I'm sorry, I, I can't get the armor, the armor of armor, um, as in Ephesians, the, the word is the sword. It's our weapon with which we fight, with which we fight off lies, deceptions, the enemy, but also which examines our heart. So where it says in Hebrew, the word is, is sharper than a two-edged sword. And in, in, in the end, it cuts through the intentions and the desires and the things that are going on in our hearts. So just as it is a weapon to fend off whatever is not true from the outside, it's also our weapon to guard our hearts on the inside and to make sure that well from which we live, that lemon, the juice that's coming out, that it is juice that produces life. And um, that it's it's juice that is washed in the word of truth, and that is um, that is portraying the spirit of God, and is portraying the love of Jesus in and through us. So, uh, so just as as it is a sword to God outside, also a sword to cut through the intentions and the things which are in us that are actually harming us. Um, let's say, like Leray mentioned, triggers certain things that are triggering certain behaviors in us, certain past things that happened um, hurts. And disappointments, uh, things that we believe that is not the truth, that kind of makes us doubt ourselves and, and doubt what God wants for us and keeps us fearful and keeps us in bondage. And, you know, God wants to, he wants to prune us and remove those things. So the word, it, it cleans us inside and it also fends off what's coming up from the outside. I think one of the ways also that we can guard our hearts is to just check what we see and what we hear. 
and also be careful of people that speak into our lives. You understand? Sometimes for me, and, and, and my testimony is that I stopped watching news because it started making me very anxious. It was the time where there was this um, xenophobic attack and then there was a constant call from back home where it was, are you guys okay? Are you this, are you that? And we sat down and it wasn't happening around us, but people keep hearing and calling and saying, and we watching, you become anxious. Like we, we just became, so we decided at a point, okay, this is what we are going to do. We're not going to be even picking calls apart from our parents who really know what is going on. What if they are worried, they must just pray. <laughs> so we decided not to pick calls, not to hear, because hearing sometimes, you know, just makes your heart, just goes numb. You start having anxiety. And the, the Bible truly says that we shouldn't be anxious of nothing. So what we see, what we hear, and sometimes people that speak into our lives, it is very important that we guard our hearts um, towards people who speak into our lives. Why is that so? Not everybody is on this journey with you. And sometimes mm -hmm. we are in a hurry to go, go to the world to, to talk to us about how our health is supposed to be, our, our relationships are supposed to be. And I have nothing against doctors or psychologists. If it wasn't then half of Christians will actually die because we're not taking our full authority in healing. But sometimes when we listen so much to the negativity or to their truth, which is not our truth, which is in the word, our heart just goes away from our, the promises that God actually has for us. So when, as you said, we inform our, our hearts with the word of God, what does the word say, especially on whatever you are facing? Is it depression? Is it, is it anxiety? What does the word say? Yes, go and seek professional help. But what does your source say about what you are facing? Let us not allow anybody to just drop in, drop in words. And even I, 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 can, I can be um, very careful to also say about even listening to some, some word, random word of God in, in, on, the, on the television or let's say on the internet where they are speaking, there was a time we were listening to, I think I came across a, a preacher who was condemning other preachers about what they were preaching, about grace and that. And I sat down and I asked myself, how many people are listening to this man? How many people would just slot in into this man's way of thinking, which is not what God says. He is, some people would preach the word, but we all know it is not what the, that is the truth. So we should be very careful and very picky on the things that we listen to, the things that we hear, and people that talk into our lives. Very important. Yeah, um, I definitely agree. I think uh, if, if I listen to all of you speak now, it's also got to do with our daily habits. And I um, drew up a, a little list the other day for Ray Designs, and it, it's in my daily habits. It was um, pray and spend time in the Word, which will, of course, give you... Um, that, that armor and the what you can replace the bad thoughts with if your head is filled with the word um, and you struggle with something. If it's fear, then you can say, well, the Bible says 366 times, don't fear. There's even one for the leap year. Or if you feel um, I'm not good enough, then the Lord says, but you are, you're an heir of a king. And you can go and you can say, and you can replace every doubt that you have. And um, with doing, you know, reading up about all of this God in your heart, I, I saw that um, Solomon was one of the wisest men in the Bible, wasn't he? Um, to guard your heart is something that's very wise. Um, and it's not always easy. Um, and it sometimes takes making a difficult decision. Um, and I know this week I actually um, going to be vulnerable here, but... I was, I was really faced with um, a battle in my mind to kind of default to the negative behavior that I used to have. Um, and it's as if, because I was so full of word and of the spirit and I constantly talk to the Lord and I have this relationship with him, while I was going almost down this dark path, he kept saying to me, but no, you don't have to do that. And suddenly I found myself responding and not doing 
what I would have done in the past. And um, I could very easily, um, because I had the tools and because my habits were in place of spending time in prayer, um, surrounding myself with, with friends that know the Lord and that are positive, um, watching uh, what, what, what television programs I watch or what music I listen to, uh, making sure that in my house I have visual reminders every day to, to you know, keep myself in check. And so nothing really um, happened this, despite my own fleshly weakness that caused me to maybe go back to um, a past crutch. And immediately when it happened and all those other things were in place, it was so much easier. And that's why it's important. You don't live a good, clean life because you're a Christian and Jesus is watching me. You do it for the times when it's hard. Because then when the devil comes to test you, you can stand strong. That's what it's about. And I was thinking about it because, you know, sometimes people think, I don't want to be a Christian because it's the narrow road. It's not nice, you know. I want to do all the lack of things. And it's, you know, for me, not worth the destruction that my life was. And if anybody else is listening to this, and you know what I'm talking about. Um, I'm not saying that if you're a Christian, you can never um, have a glass of wine or enjoy your life. That's not what I'm saying. But you know when something is dangerous for you. And when you kind of um, have that armor on and you're prepared and your mind is sharp, oh, let the devil try and get to you and, and he won't get it right. And so I'm very glad that I had everything kind of there because it's not easy. And um, your life isn't all of a sudden perfect when you know the Lord. That's when the devil comes to attack you. He's not going to say, oh, you gave your heart to the Lord. Oh, no, let me leave her alone. Then he's going to try and get at you. Um, so yeah, it's such a relief. It was for me this week when I struggled with temptation and I had all the little things kind of guarding me. It was, it's, yeah. Something that's special, Larae, how you mentioned, it comes down to being ready in and out of season, that your guarding of your heart was the preparation for the time for when it was needed the most. But during the time of preparation, it wasn't really needed that much. Um, but when it came to that important decision that you needed to make, not to turn back to, to old ways or crutches, you, you did put the time in and you are reaping the fruit and eating the fruit of that. Um, something that I can identify with you and not to the same extent that you have experienced, but I've become aware lately um, that it is important to determine if we have certain patterns in our behavior that, that leads us um, to destruction or that leads us to a place where we are not guarding our hearts or putting good things in there. And I realized that when I become overwhelmed and overloaded with too many things to do, and I'm actually not really coping anymore, I tend to do this thing. I tend to, I'm not able to switch off my mind and um, I, I'm looking for an escape for my thoughts. So what I do is I put something on TV that's a real life drama that really draws me in and it makes me forget like where I am, what I'm busy with, it makes me feel like I'm in that drama or in that situation or in that story or series or whatever. And then what happens is the pattern is as follows. So I'm overwhelmed. I'm becoming desensitized, not feeling anything anymore. Um, I don't want to pick up my phone when it rings. Those are all signs that, you know, you need to be careful of where you are yeah. at and get your boundaries in place again and check things. Okay, so then I start watching TV um, too late. Uh, the first night I'll try to, um, to have self-restraint and say only, only until 10 o'clock. But the second night it's 11, the, the third night it's 12, one. And then I'm watching a lot of stuff that is not contributing to my life at all. It actually makes yeah. my emotions feel worse than I already do. And, um, and in the end, this pattern, I can see how then I, I get negative and then if someone sends me a message about about COVID and the de devastation and vaccine and no vaccine usually I can navigate <laughs> myself quite okay through that but during those times then it starts sucking me in and I'm like 
you know, all these things and I'm seeing stuff in the media and I'm starting to feel fearful and depressed and, and then I'm down the hole. And, and it was so amazing. I had a friend that actually made me aware how she became aware of a pattern that she is um, usually follows. And the moment she started to speak about, she sees a pattern. It's like the Holy Spirit, just in my spirit, just, can you see this pattern? So when you become tired, when you're overwhelmed, don't do this because this is not contributing. It's not helping. It's, it's making things worse. Okay, Yo, I think we have so much to say about this topic um, that we can discuss this further um, because this life is life. And what's so amazing is what's come through now is that um, God doesn't leave us alone. He knows exactly what is in our tomorrow. And he, if we let him, if we yield to him, he prepares us for each and every situation. He, he makes sure that we will be able to survive, that we will be able to make the right choices, that we will be able to, to give juice and fruit that brings life. And um, so this is just um, this is just so great to know that God is so gracious, that hey, he is so good and that he is always there for us. And we, we can just trust in him. So I think we're going to just wrap up there today because life is life and every day things are happening and every day we get overwhelmed. And I think especially in this time with what's going on around us, each of us are facing their own things. It's so important to really just be open about these things, to talk about it, to get it out in the open because it's like Larice said, it's not just giving your heart to Jesus and now everything is going to be great and um, that's it and life is just going to be one happy road it it's work but it's worth it because yeah. we know that we serve a king of kings and he is our king so I think I we're just going to wrap up there tonight and um, just say thank you thank you to everyone that's that is listening and we are excited to continue this discussion with you.